Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. All right, everybody, welcome to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use that code BEARBETS. That's code BEARBETS, B-E-A-R-B-E-T-S, two words, for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. I am the Bear, Chris Felica. That is Jeff Schwartz, my co-host. Sammy P. and Will Hill will join us a little bit later for the Gambling Group Chat. Eh, not the best of weeks overall last week, but I, I must give uh, Mr. Schwartz here his, uh, his kudos. He now a perfect 3-0 and on the year uh, in his best bet. So uh, well done, uh, Mr. Oregon Duck. Thank you. Um, I am basically doing the same thing every week for my best bet. It will continue again this week, Bear. Uh, when you find a team to wager against, I think you just keep wagering against them until they prove you mm-hmm. otherwise. It doesn't have to be that hard, Bear. And we're going to do a get. We're going to go back to that well again this weekend. We'll get to that in, in a few minutes. Uh, but yeah, we, we're starting off well, which is good. Um, you know, it's a good, it's a good place. So I feel like as you know, as the season goes on, we get to know more about these teams. We should hone in on on the numbers and, and what we'd like in a given week. And uh, we'll talk all about most of that later in the gambling group chat, though, Bear. I want to talk to you about conference odds because I am not the biggest fan of the USC Trojans. And I try my best, Bear, to find ways to not wager on USC. However, at plus 1,000 right now, as a newcomer to the Big Ten, doesn't it feel like a wager worth taking if you look at USC's schedule right now? No? No. No, because the schedule means they're still going to have to play Ohio State and they're still going to be well north they're still going to be north of a, a two touchdown underdog probably in that game uh again against ohio state in the big 10 championship game so no i, I don't i don't think they are a big 10 championship uh winner uh, now if we're talking to odds to make the playoff it whatever i, I think it's, that was right around plus, plus 170 plus, or so. 150, plus 150 right yeah. now that's a different story make the playoff i think they can certainly make the playoff because, uh, like I said, a, lot, a yeah. lot of the middling to bottom teams in this Big Ten uh, are not very good, and uh, you avoid playing Ohio State until and Oregon, uh, the Big Ten championship game, and Oregon. Then uh, you, you're potentially looking at yourself oh. there. But uh, I mean, I, th- I think the plus money to make the playoff is much more likely uh, th- than them beating Ohio State in if, the Big Ten championship game. If they beat Michigan this weekend, where do those numbers go? Do they were like having that in your in your back pocket? Like that's sort of my thought, right? If you get plus one thousand okay. now to play, and they end up having to play Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game, don't you have a, a a good number in your pocket to play Ohio State in that game too? Well, that's a good point because that, that's that's the goal with a lot of these future prices yeah. that um you, you you're going to ultimately uh, be be in a position to lock in a profit on what whatever side that you want to. Because if if they if they win beat. this weekend, Bear, the rest of their schedule. It's the tough, two toughest games right now. Penn State's at home. Nebraska's at home. The road Notre games. Dame is, Notre, Dame, Notre Dame defense is still. But Notre Dame doesn't good. matter for this for this wager though, right? Because it's a Big Ten champion. So that that game is that game is irrelevant. So the toughest road game. Okay, I, I, I was thinking. I was thinking playoff. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. That, that game actually might be an elimination game for both teams, right? Whoever wins that game could be in or out of the playoff. That feels like a fun game to get to the end of the show. But like at Washington, at UCLA, at Maryland, at Minnesota. I don't know, man. I, I look again, I try my best to never wager anything USC. It, 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 my, my, my brew and blood doesn't let me do that. But I was looking at the numbers this week, Bear, and I don't know, man. I, I think USC has a chance to be a playoff team, which I, I never expected that to, to be the case. As we get to sort of the bulk of the Big 12 um, you know, conference starting now. We, we actually had a conference, not a conference game last week, but uh, a, a few teams playing Kansas State, Arizona. Has your thoughts about the Big 12 changed at all? No, not, not my, my thought. 
my thoughts about the Big 12 have changed, and I think that we've eliminated a couple of these teams from yeah. being serious contenders in the Big 12, Arizona and Kansas being two of them. They, they, are, they are not uh, Big 12 contenders. However, uh, I think Iowa State certainly is. I think that was a big win for UCF last week. Uh, they certainly are. Uh, and the two teams playing in Stillwater this week, uh, Utah and Kansas State, Utah and Oklahoma State certainly are. And then, of course, K-State and Iowa State. So I, I think we've got... I think we've got six legit contenders there now. And uh, it feels like one of those, I want to say elimination games this week uh, in in Stillwater, but certainly a very important game because as we talked about before the year with so many teams in these mega conferences now, tiebreakers are going to matter. So um, yeah, Utah, Utah, Utah laying a a small number here in Stillwater. It'd be an interesting game to see if they can go on the road and win this week. This does not look like one of those vintage Utah teams in terms of physicality like we were uh, typically seeing. Maybe late to the party, Bear, but I did take Kansas State plus 350 this week uh, to win the Big 12, mostly because I think they're going to get to the Big 12 championship game, right? Now, they go to BYU this weekend. That's a little trickier. It's a night game in Provo, Mm -hmm. tough place to play. That number is actually kind of coming down toward BYU. But then they play Oklahoma State off of playing Utah. So that's sort of an advantage Kansas State there, right? And the rest of the schedule, Bear, Colorado, West Virginia, Kansas, Houston, ASU, Cincinnati, and then at Iowa State, uh, I believe that's like Thanksgiving weekend. So it feels like there's a chance for them to, to be in the Big 12 championship game just based off their schedule and the way they play. Like, they, they're their quarterback. I'm not sure, It's going to be hard to stop, man. Well, he can't throw. That, I mean, Correct. That, that's one game. Yes, but but the way they run the football, though, here's the thing about – this is – we're going to get to Michigan in a few minutes, but this is why I sort of think Michigan – will have a better chance to, to move the ball offensively this week. When you have a quarterback that can run the way Kansas State's quarterback can run and the way that the orgy can run, is it makes third down manageable, right, Bear? When you win in first and second down, instead of being third and eight, it's now third and two. You can do a lot of things on third and two, and it allows your quarterback to throw the football in those situations in a safe manner rather than third and eight. And, and by the way, third and two is also a running down. You can run the football. So Kansas yep. State stays ahead of the chains a lot, to where their quarterback doesn't have to throw the ball. Like, watching a game against Arizona, I thought the same thing. Just stop the run, Arizona, and you have a chance to slow down Kansas State. But they didn't do that, and they never put the onus on that offense to have to throw the football. So that's why I like Kansas State, Bear. I don't see any of these teams really. Look, if they get in, in, in a game where there's a shootout, maybe you have to throw the ball a little bit more. But a lot of these teams, I don't think, can stop the run game and get until you get to maybe Iowa State at the very end of the season to force oh, to force them to throw the ball. Yeah, B- BYU on the road this week. It'd be tougher than we think. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State plays defense, and then at Colorado and at West Virginia, I don't, I don't think those are easy games as well. And then certainly the game in Ames at the end of the. I, I wouldn't go pencil on the uh, the Wildcats into the, Ooh, the Big Twelve okay. Championship game uh, just yet, but uh, we're going to pencil in Sammy P and Will Hill uh, to join us here in the gambling group chat. We're going to talk about some teams that maybe we could pencil into the the college football player from the group of five gambling group chat time. Once again, myself, Jeff, we're joined by Sammy P and Will Hill. And obviously last week, Memphis got a, uh, another scalp for the, uh, the group of five, probably uh, I want to say the, the biggest one because Northern Illinois got one the week before uh, against Notre Dame and the, the Huskies with an IE are the only group of five team uh, currently ranked. They are 23rd in this week's AP poll. Uh, Memphis is actually 23rd in the uh, in the coaches poll, and Northern Illinois not ranked there. But uh, one, Northern Illinois, the only team ranked in the AP poll right now, Memphis just outside, Boise State just outside, uh, UNLV just outside, and Memphis 26, Boise 28, uh, UNLV 29. So you got a couple teams right on the outside looking in. Uh, I, I guess, Will, I'll start with you. Uh, if you were looking at, at the uh, odds to make the college football playoff amongst these group of five teams, who, which one of these four uh, would be your choice, or is there someone else out there that you might consider other than uh, UNLV, Memphis, uh, Northern Illinois, and uh, Boise? 
Yeah, it just uh, it makes me so sad that Texas State was not mentioned. That was a tough one last. What was it? Thursday night. It was going up against the NFL game where they were, you know, up twenty-one-seven against Arizona State. They had their opportunities and they just couldn't, uh, you know, seize the opportunity. So, you know, we'll see how the rest of their season plays out. I like UNLV. I just think, look, that was one you were on last week. I think you were on the under, but you had the right handicap. Where I, I think we were all looking to fade Kansas. Odom's a good defensive coach, and that team is just so well coached that. Uh, UNLV, I think that win against Houston has aged nicely. When you look at how competitive Houston was against Oklahoma, it was the following week. Uh, UNLV would be the team on my radar, Sammy. I thought it was very nerve wracking that we were all sitting here last week talking about Texas state and the open was Arizona state, I believe minus three and it closes Arizona State plus three. And at the end of our show, I'm like, we all know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. We all know what's going to happen. Were those guys not? We make fun of those guys. Where were those guys? We all were on Texas State. I actually said I like plus three a little bit more. And if you had plus three, numbers matter. Despite what people tell you on the Internet, numbers actually matter. And, Bear, I also I want to go on a power ratings rant, a rant, excuse me, a little bit later because people are telling me that my numbers are wrong on Tennessee, Oklahoma. And, Oh, I got absolutely slaughtered on the internet last week for saying, how dare, how dare I say Oklahoma's live against Tennessee. Well, Sammy, well, no, no, how, how, you, you, Jeff, do you want to you ever you want to just go right into this now? Or, or you, I, you have I, I, I just want to give, I want to give one team out that I think might not have a chance, but might be worth a play. Washington state guys has Boise state in a couple of weeks. If they beat Boise State, they will have been a Big 12 team in Texas Tech, a Big 10 team in Washington, and Boise State, a presumed team that might have a chance to make the playoff. The rest of the schedule is pretty cake, guys. Can Washington State get in 11-0 with no conference championship game, right? Because they can't play in the Mount West championship. Are they, are they, is that a team worth wagering plus 2,000 to make the playoff right now? It could be. I mean, I, I, I think it could be. What, what, what's their... Uh... I mean, the, the Boise State game obviously matters, and then it's a um, it's a Mountain West they, team, so it's it's Fresno State, Hawaii, San Diego State, former uh, future Pac-12 team there, Utah State, well, New New Mexico, at Oregon State. They're better than Oregon State, and then they play Wyoming to end. Yeah, I mean they they, they certainly um, they they certainly would be uh, in in the mix. Are, now are, are they? Yeah, are they like the highest? The the question I have, and I, I feel like an idiot for for saying this. What, what is it? What's the correct terminology of the rule uh, with with the college football playoff? Like the the, the five highest ranked conference champions. Like they, I don't, they're not really considered a, a conference no. champion. That's the problem. I right. don't think they're, they and would not. I, be- I don't think I don't think with that yeah. schedule at twelve and zero that they're they're going to be at large. But but I don't I don't think is the as the criteria and the the guidelines and rules currently say that they would be technically one of the five highest ranked uh, conference champions. So that could they get in? Yeah, but I don't. I don't think it's a uh, a realistic deal. Even if they do get to uh, to twelve and zero, being that you probably your your best wins are going to be over one of the worst teams in the Big Ten, uh, Washington, one of the worst teams in the Big Twelve, Texas Tech, and and your fellow Pac twelve holdover, Oregon State. So. I like your thought, but I, I just don't see it happening. But I'm, I'm going to circle back now to Sammy for, I think, what what's probably the biggest game of the week, uh, Tennessee going to Oklahoma. And, yeah, well, I, I, I want to just get your take. Like, I don't think people were saying that you don't think – I don't think the deal was like Oklahoma is not live here. I, I think we were all kind of taken back at what you had the number in and, and maybe keeping that book of Sammy P in business a little bit longer than maybe one game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as of last Wednesday, I had Oklahoma 31, Tennessee 23. Now, look, that's that's not to say that that's what I think the final score is going to be. You obviously make your adjustments off that. And look, there's a difference between making a number and like putting up a number. If I was running a book, I would have probably opened Tennessee like three and a half because, you know, the perception on Tennessee is is through the roof. Which I, I mean, think is what which is you know, what I think DraftKings hung, not DraftKings up. One of the other books actually hung an opener, I think two and a half, and a look at yeah. Tennessee minus two and a half. So that 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 number, you're 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 right on with that. 
Yeah, well, and then people. No, I wasn't talking about you guys. I was talking about like I think some Rocky Top message board got a hold of that clip. I think our producer Sully dropped the clip on the Absolutely. message board. Yes. And this nerd that never played football says that Oklahoma should be minus seven. That's not what I said. It would never be minus seven. Nobody would bet that game on the Oklahoma side. You have to obviously make Tennessee the favorite. I Okay, so I upgraded Tennessee again because they played another bum and they scored a million points. My concern for Oklahoma is that, A, I'm too high on them, and, B, their offensive line is, is looking problematic and they have two receivers that are hurt right now. Bear, you also have talked about Jackson Arnold for what feels like a month now. And he has not been as good as advertised. And remember, Will and Jeff, this was a quarterback that got Dylan Gabriel out of Norman. This was supposed to be the dude. Dylan Gabriel was so scared of Jackson Arnold, he went to Oregon. So, okay, maybe I'm a little high on Oklahoma relative to market. But... Good Lord, seven points at home? They haven't been this big of a dog at home since 1998. Final That's... game of the John Blake era. Any any time you're getting a superlative to the John Blake era, you, you, you know it's pretty telling. And I think an interesting subplot to this game, speaking of like the late 90s and that era, uh, Hypo obviously played at Oklahoma, coached at Oklahoma. He was fired from Oklahoma. So look, if, if uh, you know, if, not that he ever needs a reason to stick one in late, but if he gets a chance to stick one in late, I, I think he's absolutely going to do it. And look, I, I'm just, I'm not in the, it's not my nature to lay points, lay points on the road. That being said, I want no part of Oklahoma for all the reasons Sammy detailed, the offensive line. I don't think this is these are great weapons with, with Oklahoma. And remember now, we're talking SEC speed, SEC, you know, front four with Tennessee, where man, if you have offensive line issues, that's not the team you want to face. I think we're gonna know early in this game. I, I could see Tennessee winning this game and winning it comfortably. Uh I saw some six and a half start to pop up. I Again, I don't love laying points here, but if if you made me bet the game, I would lay it on Tennessee, and I, I think Tennessee is capable of winning this game and winning it comfortably. And again, I think we'll know early here. Yeah, you're looking at Oklahoma. It's a team that's averaging four point eight six yards per play, hundred and sixteenth in the country. Like they're one hundred and sixteenth. Florida State is one eighteen, and Wisconsin is one nineteen. So that's the type of company that this offense is keeping right now. And we were on Tulane last week, and it was probably the right side in the game. They had the ball oh. down five mid fourth quarter and couldn't cover thirteen and a half. So uh, sometimes you're on you're on the right side and you lose, and sometimes you're on the wrong side and you win. And I, I think we probably had the right side in Tulane. They just couldn't uh, get it there. Uh, that third and uh, was it third and eleven scramble from the twenty four with with Arnold, and he and, and he scored the touchdown. That that was just an absolute killer. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this game. Uh, in, in the best bet segment as well. But yeah, I, I don't think this is to a point, Jeff, where I want to where I want to get too heavily involved in the side, but I do have a thought on the total later. I find it interesting how we talk about this game and the one thing we haven't talked about is a quarterback making his first true road start. Like that, this is a big deal, right? Nico had yeah. a, a neutral site game in Charlotte with you know again neutral site so half 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 and that stadium wasn't full anyways and this guy this is a legitimately tough place to play and he's making his first road start like i think that that's being ignored this is a hard if, if i just said at anyone hey guys a player a quarterback who's very good don't get me wrong very good football player is making his first true road start at oklahoma in prime time as a seven and a half point favorite You'd probably be like, ooh, I don't know if that's a side I want to take. And it feels like no one's talking about that prospect of just growing pains yeah. with a brand new offense, not brand new per se, but a new offense with a new quarterback working together for the first time on the road. Now, if they get out and score early and it's 14 nothing, yeah, they're going to blow them out. Absolutely. But I think we're discounting how hard it is to play on the road in your first road start as a big-time quarterback in a big-time moment like this. And even you don't even need to say first first time starter. Look, no, ask Georgia about a, a conference road game and how hard they are against a Kentucky offense that's terrible with, with a quarterback who won a, a New Year's Six game last year and uh, nearly won the SEC title. And Carson Beck, like Georgia, Georgia was life and death to to win that game at Kentucky. So yeah, those, those first road games we find out a lot uh, about teams this year. Um, and we're going to find out about another team, I think, in USC a little bit this week. Yeah, they had the neutral site game like Tennessee did um, in uh, the neutral site game in Vegas against LSU. But now the, the 
You look at USC going on the road to Michigan. Obviously, we, I don't think we think very highly of, of the Michigan offense, and, and certainly their defense is doing things uh, a little bit differently this year, uh, blitzing a little bit more than, than what they did last year with the personnel that they have. Maybe it doesn't fit uh, what Wink really wants to do, but he's trying some different things and maybe implementing his style more on the personnel that they have. I don't know, but uh, – this number feels a little a little low to me. Uh, if I, this feels like one of those games, Sammy, that uh, the world is going to be betting uh, betting USC in this game, uh, we're five and a half and forty. Uh, now it looks like someone might have blasted the total when we started. The total was forty six and a half, and now it's down to to forty four and a half. But uh, can, can I interest you at all? in uh, going back to the well with the Wolverines as a home underdog, like, like you had a couple of weeks back against Texas. Uh Uh-oh. I should, but I won't. I should. Yes. But I won't. (laughs) So I've made 19 bets this year on chicken dinner. I'm 12 and seven. Nice picks, nerd. (laughs) Two of the losses. Two of the losses are on Michigan. I had Michigan (laughs) against Texas. Yep. And I laid 22-23 with Michigan last week in a game they're up 28-3. to And that's despite Davis Warren having three interceptions. They're still up 25 and now gaining you by almost 300 yards. It's an unfathomable non-cover last week by yep. Michigan. So do I want to bet Michigan? No. Should you bet Michigan? Yes. Probably. I just, I can't. Will, I can't. I've got I've I like I'm waking up in the middle of my of my like slumber and seeing Sharon Moore on the sideline like ah like I just it's just one of those things where the coaching drop off is so unreal from Harbaugh to Sharon Moore they I mean they had like seven eight penalties they're they're turning the ball over they're doing all this stupid stuff but now they make the quarterback change. And what they're going to do with Alex Orgy is they're going to run, I don't want to call it wildcat, but they are going to line up and try and run the ball down USC's throat the whole game. And I think that to me is the biggest question because you're not laying 21 with Michigan. I think that was a huge mistake by me looking back in hindsight, even though they were up 28 to three. But they're catching, you know, five and a half, six at home was still a pretty good defense. And now it's just going to be power run. So you're going to have to go into their building, USC going into Michigan, 100,000 people in the stands. And you have to roll Michigan in their building. USC is nowhere near as good as Texas is. So look, if if I didn't, if I wasn't terrified of betting Michigan again and looking like a total jackass on the internet, I would probably take Michigan in this spot. But I just I can't do it. I'm done. And you get called nerd a lot. I think Bears Burner needs to uh, come up with some new insults <laughs> to uh, to call you. Look, like I got, you said, I, got a, making... I got a lot of them out there. Will I? I got a lot of Burner. I got you I, go. I'm, you I'm, need I'm like Durant. Durant on steroids with all my, <laughs> my Burners. I got to make sure I'm logged into the right account on the right tab. <laughs> Man, that would, uh, yeah, that that would be quite the scandal. Um, look, S- Sammy laid it out. You're, the, the case for Michigan, your home, the defense, and, and you're getting points. Again, it's like with Oklahoma. I just don't know if I can get there. It's the old, uh, it's the old Ron Jaworski line. Points come out of the passing game, and they just don't have a passing game. And say what you want about Lincoln Riley, he's going to scheme up his 24, 28 points pretty much against anyone, especially with Moss, who has been impressive. I think this USC team is more talented than they were last year. Um, I mean, USC winning this game by a touchdown is not outlandish to me. I, I Again, I haven't bet it, and I don't like laying points. I don't like laying points on the road. This is another one. I, I would actually lay the road favorite here. I just don't like this Michigan team. And, man, big picture. Boy, I, I, I wish they had odds, and I don't know why they don't have odds. Maybe we can ask John Murray on the, uh, the NFL pod about odds to make a bowl game. Michigan's probably going to make a bowl game. But if you look at the schedule, they already have a loss. They're an underdog here. They play Oregon. They play Ohio State. That could be four losses. I mean, some of these teams, Indiana, uh, Michigan State, Illinois, some of these teams in the Big Ten that are on their schedule at Washington are a lot better than we thought, especially, you know, in Indiana, Illinois, and and Sparty. I mean, uh, a five-six loss season is very much on the table for Michigan. I don't like this team at all. uh, I I lean towards Lane here with USC. You know, I I agree with you, Will. Like, seven and five feels like a a maximum type 
optimum optimal season for Michigan at this point. And I think it's one of those things you look back on and you saw that win total preseason yeah. you know, whatever it was. And it's like, you, you kind of felt it could go this way. Cause he really, you kind of felt they didn't have a quarterback and you kind of felt that they lost so much. And, and you kind of felt that maybe Sharon Moore was just kind of the stopgap uh, head coach. Uh, once they get sang, like it just, yeah, it feels like a missed opportunity. Oh, and oh, by the way, you mentioned Illinois. Like, I, I think every person I heard oh. like, was like Illinois under, Illinois under, Illinois under, and 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 and, and old and old and old Burt Bielma is there sitting at three and zero heading into a uh, a game against Nebraska this week. Yep, Michigan State was another team. Everyone was on their under. BYU, a lot of people are on their under. They're they're undefeated going into this game. So yeah, it's uh, a lot of group think I think with these win totals. Not that I'm sitting here with over tickets, but it is funny to look back. Yeah, Jeff, you back in your Trojans this week? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. The thing about about USC guys, and obviously their defense is much better than it was the previous two years, but they don't have a road win under Lincoln, right? like a signature road win. I mean, I, I think it's it's I I know Michigan. It's not played as well as we thought. I, I'm with Sammy. I had them last two weeks. I'm not going back there again this weekend. But they almost can't play worse offensively, right? I know Orgy's not going to throw the ball quite right. like they, they would like. <laughs> but, like, they're going to, to find a way, I think, to just muck up this game offensively, right? Try to push USC around up front. Use the quarterback in the run game. And when you do that, you're able to generate some explosive pass plays via play-action pass. Like, I think that that's going to be a big part of this game. And then defensively, I have to see, guys, USC – line up and punch a physical defense in the mouth. It's something they have not done in two years or two plus years under Riley. LSU's defense is not as physical as Michigan's. It's not as physical as a bunch of defenses they're going to face this year. And they still needed incredible catches to be in that game, right? That one-handed catch, another catch down on on the final drive of the game. If they don't get both of those in that game, which are 50-50 passes, they don't even beat LSU. So I think we're a little bit too much, too high on USC, even though I give them credit for the way their defense has played. A little bit too low on Michigan. Sammy mentioned they they were controlling that game last weekend. One less interception, right, Sammy? They're up 35-3, easy cover. We walk away with some money. So I just think we're kind of in in both directions here. I'm not not wagering this game, right? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, you know, shame on me. I'm not going back to that well. But I think we're a little high on USC and a little bit too low on Michigan. Well, I'm I'm looking back just at last year to see some of the the, uh, the Pac-12 playoff teams that they – or New Year's six teams that uh, USC played in talk about dominating the line of scrimmage uh, against Washington, 27 carries, 203. And then against Oregon, 25 carries, 73 yards. So uh, shocking against UW, they they kind of had made some big plays. And against Oregon, uh, they were not able to do so. But yeah, you, you're getting back to we talked about SC and Lincoln Riley in, in games. Uh, if you go back since 2021, Lincoln Riley's team has been a favorite away from home 13 times. They're three and ten against the number, two and seven against the number at, at SC. So uh, the, these are the types of games that they have uh, struggled in, um, in in recent years. So they, they've won ten of the thirteen, but yeah, it would not surprise me at all. We look up in the fourth quarter of this game, and this is like seventeen thirteen USC, and they kind of need a late a late drive to salt it away. Like. Uh, the number going to 44 and a half now with the total. I mean, that, that that sucks that we just had bad timing here with the recording of the pod. I'd still be looking at a, a Michigan team total under here because uh, I like what Danton Lane's offense, a defense rather, has done uh, so far this year. They just look like they're coached and they, and they look prepared and they look like they tackle better. And I, and I know that this is going to be a, a step up in terms of a running game that they're going to have to play uh, in face this year. But I, I just have very, very little respect for for Michigan offensively. You're going to see a lot of runs. You're going to see this clock tick away. You, you, you're, going to, you're going to see fewer plays in this game. So uh, give me a Michigan team total here, and maybe we'll get lucky and see that that total uh, clip uh, click back up or, or so in, in, in this game. But uh, the, uh, the, the third uh, game uh, between ranked teams on Saturday, is Utah at Oklahoma State? Uh, the Utes are what? Are, I think we're looking at two and a half now, maybe with the uh, uh, with, with the Utes in uh, Stillwater. I think is where we are. Cam Rising uh, will be back. It, it's interesting. Yeah, we're looking at yeah, Utah two and a half fifty four uh, is where we are with the uh, 
with the number here. You, you look at outside of these three ranked matchups Saturday, Saturday, 14 teams playing unranked teams, favored by over 25 points per game on average. So outside of the ranked games, and then you got K-State minus seven at BYU being the uh, the other one. Uh, that, that's kind of close-ish, but uh, that's one ranked team, one ranked team. But a lot of blowouts with this being the uh, the one that is not perceived to be as well. Uh, check back later in the week because this is going to be the, the Super 6 game powered by DraftKings. One of those questions is going to be uh, the total in this game. We're looking at over 51.5 or under 51.5. And, a half. and uh, I kind of think, Sammy, that this is going to be a – a higher scoring game than we think. Gundy in these types of games uh, always seems to figure something out. Uh, that Utah defense last week, uh, again, maybe it was a little bit of a look ahead spot, but they did not look to be the typical dominant Utah defense that we see in the trenches. So, uh, super sick column there in the week. One of those questions, like I said, going to be over under 51 and a half. I would certainly lean towards the over here, Sam. You got any thoughts on, uh, on the Sooners and the Utes? Well, I love that we can play this game because this game oftentimes allows us to pick off bad numbers. The total at Pinnacle is 54 and a half. So oh. maybe uh, maybe the over is, is not a bad play. I did have to laugh too, guys. Did you see the combined age of the starting yeah. quarterbacks in this one? I'm sorry if I'm stealing anybody's thunder here, but I believe the combined age is 49 because Rising is 25 and Alan Bowman is 24. They were so, both they were both in Brock Purdy's recruiting class. <laughs> He's now so, in his third year in the NFL. Yeah, older than Caleb Williams, older than Jaden Daniels, older than well, maybe not Bo Nix because he's like forty now, right? Um, this is this is that's a, a game. That's a that's NFL offensive rookie of the year, Bo Nix. No, it's it's not Bear. Actually, it's it's quite not. <laughs> um, you should get efficient offense. Here, here's my concern. My concern is rising isn't a hundred percent. And obviously we saw him miss last week. And did the boys sweat that one out or what? <laughs> 21 and a half, 21, oh. 20.5. You thought still tried to screw us all, but we got there with Utah state. We had the information. Jeff had it Tuesday. We confirmed it on Wednesday. That was great. If you watched our show on Wednesday, you were able to take 20 and a half on Utah state. And that line got down to about 18. Um, Wilson's younger brother pushed the ball a lot. Utah played really well, but Utah gave up a lot of points to Utah State. How about Utah State not scoring against USC and then, you know, getting to the 20s yeah. against Utah? That's to me I think it's it's lazy to think that this is a traditional Whittingham team. Um it's never easy to go into Stillwater and and play well. That that place is going to be out of control. Um lean to the over. In the pick six contest, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll go over 51 and a half at that point. Uh, I like Oak State. I think it's a free roll because, like Sammy said, who knows if Rising's finger is healthy, and that's a serious injury. I mean, that's not not serious injury, but when you're talking about a quarterback and his middle finger or ring finger, like e either way, that's a, that, that's a major concern. And to me, it's a free roll. If, he's, if that finger is an issue, you got a great bet on Oak State. If he's fine, then you know what? It, it's a toss-up. So to me, I'll, I'll, I'll take the points with the home dog. Uh, massive game in terms of Big 12 implications. If, if you have an inkling that, hey, Oak State's going to win this game, I think you get like, you know, four and a half to one, something like that on Oak State to uh, to win this conference. It's interesting, too, as we look at all these matchups, not a lot of data points in terms of these major teams against other teams. It's almost like preseason where you look at a lot of these teams, they haven't played anybody. So it is uh, it does make for a, a tricky handicap in some of these games. But I like Oak State. I'm just, I have some concern here about Rising's finger. So regarding Utah's defensive performance last weekend, I, I asked a, a buddy of mine, he just thinks Utah's not as talented as they've been in the past on defense. And that makes sense, right? They've lost a lot of guys to the NFL. And so, you you know, trying to replace those guys is hard. And it's early in the season. So I've covered Utah for years now. My radio host for five years played for Utah. I was thinking about this game, thinking to myself, like, when was the last time Utah run a big road game, right? They played road games now for years with, with, with rising. And the answer is, is never. Cam Rising guys is 13-0 at home and 7-6 and in road or neutral site games. And those games are often against good teams, right? They, they lost two Rose Bowls. Now, he didn't finish both those games, but they weren't really in control of those games when he got hurt. He lost at to Oregon. Your point, Jeff, to, your, to your point, Jeff, yeah. last nine games away from home versus ranked teams, they're 2-7. and seven. Yeah. And the two game against USC. Yeah, and 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 the one year they beat USC, I think you that was a four win USC team eventually, right? So I don't know if right. those if you know like that was the the, the last and the the year. Game. And and they they just 
they haven't played as well on the road. And my explanation for this is, is kind of simple, is they do not generate explosive offensive plays via the pass game very often. And when you're playing on the road, you cannot dink and dunk. You cannot go into Stillwater and have 12 play drives each and every time to score points. You have to be able to generate explosive uh, pass plays to sort of mitigate the crowd noise, right? And 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 the momentum or or confidence of of the opposing team. And so they don't do that well enough. And it, it, it's evidenced by Cam Rising in, in those losses. Guys has only six has only nine touchdown passes in six games. Um, so like that that to me is a problem. And they still don't have that answer right now. I mean, Brent Keith is that guy, I guess. But he's a tight end, right? We don't view tight ends quite often as the only way to generate explosive plays in offense. So. Uh, I have Oklahoma State here. I, I love the Utes. I love what they stand for. But for some reason, they don't win these big road, what do they stand big for, road yeah. games. Physicality. Physicality winning the trenches. I will choose okay. teams like that every single time. Um, but they just don't win these games. I, I don't have a better way to handicap this than saying there's a, now a pattern of them going on the road to play ranked teams and things combusting at the very, they went into Florida a couple years ago. I mean, again, missed tackles, turnovers. They went to Oregon a couple years ago. Bo Nix was hurt. They, 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 they couldn't beat Oregon. So they just sort of don't play as well on the road. And again, like I said, I, I'm, I would, I would be betting the, again, I don't know if I can go 54 and a half, but we can go over that uh, being the, the, the big move for 51 and a half. But uh, yeah, I'd be on, Oak State here too, and Gundy we trust. Last ten years in these toss-up type games where the spread is within a field goal, uh, either way, they are seventeen and six outright wow. under under Gundy. So he typically finds a way to win these toss-up type games, and um, I, I, I would I'll back Oak State here at home, uh, a team that I don't want to back, and and I feel kind. Of, I, again, you talk we talk about buyer's regret earlier with the season win total on, on Michigan. Uh, will like how how dumb in retrospect were we not to just bet Memphis money line, bet Memphis plus the points last week? I don't think the books have caught on to how bad Florida State is uh, just now. I mean, they, they, offensively, they are terrible. Uh, they commit stupid penalties uh, along the way. Committed a penalty that made uh, gave Memphis a, a shorter fourth down conversion. They went for it, got it, and were able to uh, put put the game away later, uh, stopping a Florida State drive, but. Uh, how, how is, I mean, Cal's already gone on the road and won at Auburn and they're catching points here in Tallahassee. Like, like it, it's Cal or nothing for hate for me here, Will. Same. And you do have to worry too, or wonder about Florida State's psyche, their state of mind when you come into the season. Hey, where they were, the, I think, the short shot for the ACC. And you think, hey, maybe we can uh, play for an ACC championship, get into a playoff, went undefeated last year. Now you're. I mean, we're, we're a few weeks into September. Everything they they want and hope for is pretty much dead. Their season is over. Their season is just going to be a wash. You wonder um, if they can get off the mat. I, I have serious concerns. To me, it's cow or nothing. I think we're still we're still, still sitting at two and a half, right? I think yeah. it's a number. Yeah, I, I would. I haven't bet it yet, but I, I would bet cow or, or nothing here. And I think about, I'll probably end up with cow in the account. Yeah, about about the about the highest point I think the season could end on for Florida State is somebody uh, dumping a. A gallon a container of mayo on Mike Norvell post the uh, post Duke's <laughs> Mayo Bowl. It's probably that's probably about the the apropos way that this oh, game I, this season uh, should end for the Knolls. Jeff, we were zero three, yeah, three losses as uh, nor, about a touchdown or North North favorite, which is it, it just just amazing how the uh, the odds have kind of been been off on the Knolls. The prior is probably weighing a little bit too much in there in Tallahassee. I thought you were going to say dump, dump something else out because that guy promised to do something if they lost that one game and he well, hasn't done it yet. And that that's is it. the they, problem. They are, cur they are cursed until that Noel Twitter account fan, until that dude pays up, he gets his red solo cup, picks something up off the off the sidewalk <laughs> and, and does what he promised he was going to do. He, I, I think there should be everyone in Tallahassee and everyone in that Florida State football program should find this guy, give him the red solo cup, and say, "Go!" We, until you do this, we're, yeah. we're 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 done. So I'm with you. I'm with I, you, Jeff. I like the under in this game. Um, if you look at Cal and just the way they play football, sort of same thing with Utah, right? Like it's a sort of a methodical pace offensively. Their yards per drive and points per drive are not very high. And Florida State's defense, I think, is okay. I mean, they're they're going to be something more physical. Than Cal typically sees, and they didn't. Cal did not score a lot of points at Auburn either. And to your everyone's point, like Florida State's offense is broken. There's no fixing it um, right now. And I think when you have a team that's either sort of with young players that you've recruited, 
And then with sort of older players that have brought in the portal, there's not a lot of, you know, backbone there when things are going bad for players that have, you know, this strong commitment to the program. I'm not saying players are quitting and not playing hard, but you sort of need those guys as older players, in my opinion, when things are going poorly. They've sort of been through the grind of the program to lift that program up, guys. I'm not sure if Florida State has those guys right now. Cal does, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the way Cal has to recruit. They don't have a lot of transfers. They got a lot of guys that stay. And so I just think, like, makeup-wise, I like Cal in this game. But I think the under, to me, Will, is, is my play. No, I'm with you. Sammy, you have anything on this game? Market agrees with Jeff. Open 45 total, down to 44. So it's it's going down. I don't know how much lower it goes. And we always get resistance. Like, if it were to hit 43, it, they'd come back over. Um, I wouldn't bet this game. I'd rather bet FCS. Now, now counterpoint here. I know we all don't want to bet Florida State. By the way, I mean, way, way, to, way to wedge that in there to make sure we weren't going to forget about it. No, 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 because I have right two out, FCS. Out, I right, have two. Out. What was the second one? Did I miss the second one? No, I have two for this week, so I can just wow. I can keep them in my pocket. You want to keep talking smack, Bear? No, 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 I no. Want, oh, I, I, no, 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 Yes, V team. Lucky that, call, that nerd. Fun. That nice call, nerd. Exactly. <laughs> I wasn't actually trying to wedge that in, but I, I think it's funny. People are going to think I'm just like some super prick this show, and that's fine because I am fired up. You are. Um, let, let me let me tell you, let me play point counterpoint for a second. What happens, and it won't happen because he doesn't bet, he doesn't bet college football. But what if the bartender came Cal? What would that do? <laughs> oh, I would be running far away. Okay. All right. How, just how, how great he, he's he's all he's the best, man. He's the absolute best. When him God, I, wish, when, I, wish, when, I wish he had some college games. That when him so and the great. voice are on a play together, it is a guaranteed. When I saw the two people that I fade the most. Last weekend, had the Colts. I made my highest wager, my most money I've wagered on an NFL game this season was the Packers plus the points. I, it was a, a guaranteed winner when those two people had them. Well, I went back and listened to your show, and yeah. I, the reason I brought up FCS is crack right off the top of your show, your national show, Jeff. He said, I just want to bet more FCS. Yeah. I agree with him. I mean, we look, I, I understand – the bosses want us to talk about all these big games, and, and it's fine. And we've, we've done a good job, I think, breaking all these games down. I personally, though, have zero edge in California, Florida State. I won't bet five cents on that game, let alone $500. It won't happen. I, I think the Florida State side could quit. I don't think California is that great. you got a team from Cal going all the way across the country again to play Florida State, it's just, it's the unbettable game for me. And a lot of these games, a lot of these marquee games, the reality is your edge isn't that strong because these lines come out Sunday afternoon, they're batted around for six whole days, and it's just like the market comes to a good number. This is probably a good number on Florida State Cal. I I don't want to bet it, and I won't bet it, period. By the way, do yourself a favor and just check out Cal Twitter. It, it, it's awesome. They they make fun of themselves. They may they make fun of their opponents. It, it it's it's awesome. So uh, yeah, you do do yourself a a hashtag Cal Twitter and uh, in, enjoy the laughs that they have at their own expense and at the expense of others. It, it's tremendous. But uh, Jeff, are we gonna? I, I think we're oppo on on the uh, the, the next game here, and you, you kind of had the best of me when we went oppo previously. Uh, what was the with, with what was Colorado the game? Getting the door. That, that was Colorado at Nebraska when I took oh, yeah. Colorado seven and a half and the and the Scurs uh, won easily. You're on the State University of New Jersey here getting three and a half against the Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. Uh, I know that Rutgers defense has been really good, but uh, Akron and Howard, uh, this is a little bit of a step up. I know the Hokies have not been great, but but at least they played a couple of teams that resemble real teams losing to Vandy and and then playing Marshall as well. By the way, the big new kickoff game this week, Marshall and Ohio state, it's a top 20 matchup top 20 in yards per play difference. 
So uh, yeah, I, I like Virginia Tech here at home. I think they, I think they get right and they and they beat Rutgers by uh, by at least four points. And I and I know you disagree, and I want to hear why. Well, Greg Shano's teams are just really fantastic off a of bye. And I, look, I like their makeup. I understand that they haven't played anyone, but I just think their physicality and the way they play defense and the run game. Manungai is fantastic, guys. He's really good. And I think their physicality just overwhelms Vir Vir uh, Virginia Tech in the spot. They, they're a team that can travel on the road. Now, I will give you this, Bear. If they have to throw the ball at all, they're screwed. Like, I, I'm, I would absolutely <laughs> lose this wager at all if this turns into a throwing contest for Rutgers. But I just like the way they, they play off a bye. Don't like Virginia Tech that much. I like the physicality of the way Rutgers plays football. So I, I'll take the three and a half points. Uh, this was the, not the best number, though, guys. This number was up up of, was it five and a half, five when it opened? Um, so you're not getting the best number now in Rutgers. Yeah, to me, this is an under game, too, for all the reasons you mentioned. If Rutgers has to throw a forward pass, uh, it could get <laughs> ugly. The rest of the roster is pretty good. I mean, they play pretty yeah. good defense. The, the running back, the offensive line is just, man, on the road with a bad quarterback. If you fall behind 7 nothing, 10 nothing, poof, the, I, I want no part of that. So it would be a lean towards Virginia Tech, and uh, I like the under most, more than anything here, Sammy. Yeah, I'm a 28-20 Vought Tech. So, I mean, if you made me bet it, I'd probably lay it. Um, also, how about last week, Barry? You were talking about you bet Virginia Tech minus 14. Mm -hmm. That started to get a little bit more expensive. It got to 14 and a half, got to 15. And we had all discussed the report that Old Dominion might be without its starting quarterback, which did come to fruition. The kid did not play. Final score 37 17. Vatek covers for you easily, ends up covering basically all the numbers. Well, did cover all the numbers. Um, I, I like them. I I'm higher on them than most in the ACC. Again, I, I didn't bet it, but I think I think the chance to potentially lay three is very enticing. Not that three, three and a half is that big of a deal in college. It's way more important to me in the NFL. I, that's how I've always felt. Um, I think three and a half to four is, is a bigger conversation in college because you see more touchdowns in college. And I don't trust kickers in college. So, you know, this open five down to three and a half, basically everywhere. DraftKings three and a half minus 106 right now. Um, that's not the worst bet, I think. But again, if I make the game eight, I should probably lay three, three and a half. I would think you probably should. I, I already have laid three and a half. Yeah, I, I forgot we gave up Virginia Tech last, last week minus the uh, minus the fourteen. Good. I get to I get to feel better about giving out at, at least uh, one more winner on the pod because it, it wasn't the, uh, uh, the the best of weeks last week for me. So yeah, I have to add that one to the the pod tally. Uh, Friday night. Ranked Illinois at ranked Nebraska. We mentioned both these teams earlier. Uh, Huskers are what seven and a half, I think, on Friday night against uh, uh actually now uh, eight, 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 yeah. eight, eight at DraftKings, and uh, you can shop around and, and find some seven and a half total of 43. I kind of wonder if Illinois is as good as their record says it is. We, Sammy, you were all over this from the start, and I've given you. Uh, proper credit everywhere I've gone on. And you talked about uh, this offense and you talked about J Jalen Daniels and how uh, the offense just does not look the same with him there instead of Jason Bean and no Matt Lubick and no Andy Colton uh, It feels like something is wrong at Kansas for the first time. Like uh, under Lance Slypole, they, they looked like they were just kind of lost on the field last week, which didn't really, which, which kind of surprised me. Uh, and I think maybe that Illinois win against Kansas maybe was more about bad Kansas uh, than great Illinois. I think this Nebraska team might be pretty good. Um, if I if I had to play this game, I'd I'd lay the uh, I'd lay the uh, the seven and a half or the eight here. I'd, obviously, I'd look for a, a seven and a half to lay as opposed to eight. But but Nebraska, you look at that schedule; they they may be undefeated. Uh, when, when they take on Ohio State later in the year, I have not played it yet, but that would be the way. Uh, I, I would lean uh, Jeff here. I'd, I'd play Nebraska yeah. if I had to bet this game. It's a super low total, right? I think it's four, it was 42 and a 43. half. Uh, 43. Uh, I think I, I would look toward the under in, the, in this spot for, for a couple reasons. One is that Nebraska's offense, guys, and, and look, Rilla is a great true freshman. It's 91st in efficiency. It has not been an efficient offense. And Illinois' defense is good. Like, you're playing a, a, a good defense, right? And then and they've had trouble scoring the ball sometimes, right? No points in color on the second half. They've had moments where the offense hasn't quite clicked, and now you have a true freshman playing against his best defense he's going to face for a while, right? This is like a, a, a legitimate defense. On the other side, 
Nebraska's defense is incredible, right? Not incredible, but their defensive line, I should say, specifically, guys. Like, I think you can control this game. They're at home. So, Sammy, I, I'd lean under here, if anything. Um, that would be my play for Friday night. By the way, Sammy, I want to throw a question at you real fast that you can hit on after you give your cap of this game, just because it involves Illinois. What the hell was going on with that number last week between Illinois and Central Michigan? Oh, man. I mean, they were just pounding Illinois. They just they bet Illinois like they had the paper the next day. You know, it was it was crazy. I mean, because that number didn't that number open like 16 and a half, mm-hmm. 17. Yep. yep. And it went all the way up. And I mean, that was that was a very, very popular side. And usually when you see it run like that, you see the bounce back. Right. You see, you can see guys come in and take, you know, 21, 21 and a half. And and the guys that took 21 ended up pushing 30 to nine. So that was that was crazy. I I, I look, I think Bielema Bielema is a dog is always very enticing to me. I've, I've loved it since he was at Wisconsin. Maybe not so much when he went to Arkansas and they fell apart because he couldn't recruit against Saban and and guys like that. But this team has an identity. They're going to run the ball. They're going to play good defense. This total is coming down. And, and I think it's worth paying attention to the way this line has moved. And, again, I don't know exactly what happened, but here's my interpretation of the market. A lot of or, uh, offshore shops opened this 9, Nebraska 9. And it got to 10 within, you know, 24 to 36 hours. So you're thinking, oh, okay, they're mm-hmm. going to come in and they're going to lay Nebraska. But then – it came flying back. I mean, we're we're talking from 10 to seven and a half right back the other way, right back in your face. So I don't want to say it because I, I have no knowledge of it, but guys, it feels like this was a setup. It feels like it feels like they bet it up to to just wham it back. Cause when you see a line open nine, go to 10 and then get absolutely destroyed down to seven and a half on a Tuesday. Right. Like that's not Marge Simpson betting 25 bucks. That that's a group. And it it feels like whoever bet it up, I don't because again, I don't know this because I don't know the guys that did this, but it feels like it got hit up to get blasted down. And usually those sides are pretty good. Marge is pretty sharp. I think she's a little sharper than you uh than you give her credit for. And I heard she's on LSU this week. She has a habit of uh of backing LSU uh in these spots. Um I l- I like the dog. I think if you like the dog too, if you like Illinois, I'll go head to head with Bear here. Don't you parlay it to the under because aren't you expecting a, a 20 to 17 type of game? And if you like Nebraska, you probably like the over. I just think Illinois is uh like much better than we thought defensively, a ball hawking secondary. Uh, and look, we, we talked about it with uh, you know, with, with Ian Maliava, the, the uh, Tennessee quarterback. First real test. I, I know they played Colorado, but that was just such a runaway. This is going to be a good defense. Can he survive in third and long? Can he, you know, thrive in that situation? We'll see. Uh, I, I, this is a fun game. This is to me, you know, Big Ten West, uh, physical football. Friday night, little little chill in the air. Early fall night game on Fox. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, I, I, I am too. Um... It, it, like I said, it is not the the biggest name game, but hey, we thought about this a couple of weeks ago when the schedule doesn't necessarily look like it's got a ton of marquee games on it. Uh, we, we usually see some crazy things. Uh, Will, is there any other game out there that you potentially had your eye on that you might want to get out there? Something you might have played? I don't know. I mean, I've been fading Notre Dame. I think I'm off of that after last week. That was a very, that was a very surprising result. Uh, Arkansas Auburn, I think, could be a fun game. I think we could see a lot of points in that game. Arkansas has been better better on offense than I thought. I don't know that either team has answers defensively. So uh, we're getting there. We're getting towards like this will be a fun week. Some of these weeks coming up, I think is what, what's it? October twelfth is the big one. So yeah. we're uh, we're starting that crescendo, that slow build until we get some monster monster games here in the coming weeks. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah, under 47 was dead on arrival on West Lafayette last week. Oh. Never, uh, never, ever, ever had a uh, had a chance to get there. Um, Sammy, the floor is yours. Well, my uh, my first bet this week was I took a little two and a half against your favorite team, Bear. I took Baylor against Colorado. Um, it sounds oh, like. It sounds like Daquan Finn might actually be okay to go, but I'm being told that he still might not play. And it sounds like the hype around Baylor is that Sawyer Robertson is is a better fit for this offense. I don't have a big enough sample size. Okay, you agree with that? Good. So we started to see the two and a half go away last night. I, I thought I was going to wait to three, but you know we're seeing some books go to one and a half. So I was able to get a two and a half. 
if you want to bet it now, you know, I, I think they're going to win. I think Baylor's going to win. So to take two and a half was important to me, but you could take two. DraftKings has a two right now. Uh, it's starting to go the other way, and it looks like it's honestly more likely to go to pick than it is to go to three. Buzz, which so, is weird. Yeah, I no, I agree. I agree. Um, and then the two FCS games this week, uh, we're going to play the over in Maryland and Villanova. Uh, again, this line will come out like an hour before kickoff. Oh. Uh, you need the rotation number. It is 308-901. That's Villanova at Maryland. We think it's like 45 because Villanova is not really like this offensive powerhouse, but Maryland could could name its score. So we're going to go over there. Again, It's we're doing this on a Wednesday, guys. It's hard because we have no lines and we won't get a line until Saturday. And uh, we're going to keep betting against Fordham. They absolutely suck this year. So in back in back-to-back weeks, uh, they were a 25-point favorite against Central Connecticut, lost by 30. And then last week, they're an 11-point favorite at home against Stony Brook, lose 27 to 21. I imagine they're going to come the favorite again. Um, and we will we'll look at Dart. Well, then again, I don't know. Dartmouth's at home, 308-938. It's hard to guess what that line's going to be because when a team loses outright at minus 25 and minus 11, it's hard to estimate where that line's going to go. But if there's anything like plus money on Dartmouth or Dartmouth minus like three, four, Dartmouth's going to get hit. I promise. Yeah, I can't imagine that Dartmouth would be anything under under a field goal. Like, like you said, especially off of two straight uh, double digit favorite outright losses. I, I, I would think that being that they're listening to our pod, which you know they are, being that they, the number that they hung on that LSU total a couple of weeks ago, and be, being the, the number that they hold, they hung last week. Like I, I think, yeah, I'd be surprised if Dartmouth were not at least a field goal uh, favorite there. And uh, I'll be in Ohio this week, so I'll be able to uh, partake in this. So you can blame me uh, when the the FCS run comes to an end this week. But no, well, no, no restaurant just, menu I, this week. What, what what are we eating in Ohio? Uh, we're going to Hyde Park. Uh, meet, meeting up with a uh, a buddy of mine. Uh, and his wife and, and uh, their daughter, Lucy. And we're going to go to Hyde Park on Friday night. Thursday, I don't know yet. Uh, Jets pass on Thursday night. So, it might, so it, might, it might be a uh, just head over maybe to the, uh, the the Hollywood Casino Sportsbook there and take in the game there. Maybe just some door dash in, in, in the room and, and watch the Jets pass there and get some work done. And But yeah, for fr- Friday, Hyde Park is a, is a great steakhouse. So that's where we're going to be. Friday and then hopefully, hopefully Friday lunch, Saturday lunch is uh, Katzinger's, uh, which is an awesome Jewish deli. Uh, you know, everyone's familiar with Zingerman's in the uh, in the Ann Arbor area, but uh, Katzinger's is the spot you want to go for a, a bowl, a nice bowl of matzo ball soup. And uh, yeah, I, I gotta press you. We don't we don't need the restaurants. We we, we want to know like the orders, the entrees. We want to live through you. The people want to live through you. Like what what are we getting at the steakhouse? I, I want, oh, we'll, I mean, go, we'll go we'll go we'll go ten ounce fillet, medium okay. rare. Um, maybe some blue trees crumples on top, and then uh, we'll go bowl of French onion soup to start, and uh, some sides probably uh, asparagus or spinach or Brussels sprouts. And then we'll get a, a starch, whether it's a, some type of a, a mashed potatoes or potatoes au gratin, something like that for the for the table. And then cat singles will be a bowl of matzo ball soup. And then we'll probably go uh, go turkey Reuben uh, as, as well. So no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing I only had a banana this morning. I'm not hungry or anything. <laughs> I know, I'm starving. I am starving. Yeah, I, I, I didn't I'm sorry. I, didn't, I had nothing either because I, I woke I woke up and and I had a, a PT. Uh, appointment this morning so i i was there and then i it ran a ran a little long and i stopped at the store uh and get some some birthday cards on, on the way back so i didn't have anything to eat uh for lunch yet either as, as we record this so uh no, i've eaten you, I've, you, I'm, you, I'm comfortably full so you're you're, you're good jeff yeah. you, you've eaten okay i'm, I'm glad Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you've taken care of <laughs> taking care of that for us but uh yeah so <laughs> you three are more important than than me grabbing a little uh bite to eat before we record this pod so uh, appreciate all your time guys hopefully we'll uh We'll have a good week, and we do it again next week. All right, Bear. I can't wait for the text to come from Sammy P. I'll be, I'll be my daughter's softball game about the time. It's about two hours before kickoff. The the, the mm-hmm. FCS numbers come out. I can't wait to be like, you, honey, I, I can't watch you play right now. I'm betting on Fordham, or I guess on Dartmouth. <laughs> Dartmouth, first game of the year, by the way. I'm just starting up right, right now. So uh, 
I don't know. I, I'm in on Dartmouth. Fordham's got no film on him. We love it. Yeah, I, fantastic. Well, team that we have film on, the Charlotte 49ers bear. The Charlotte 49ers are very <laughs> bad. That a good thing? And so I'm going to fade them this weekend <laughs> at Indiana. They're down some offensive Indiana. players, including their quarterback right now. Indiana, Indiana minus 28. Indiana. Charlotte has played JMU, UNC, Indiana. and they just beat Gardner-Webb. 27 26, and they were down 20 to 3 in that game. They're 117 points per drive on offense and 110 on defense. Bear, Indiana might be good. Like, Kurt Signetti has his team playing really good football. They went to the Rose Bowl, and I get UCLA is not very good. We'll get that in a, in a second here. But they played like legitimately good football against UCLA. The offense was clicking. The defense flies around, creates a ton of havoc. And I don't think we're going to have a letdown spot here. Certainly can feel that way, right? Charlotte's coming to town. Charlotte stinks. Oh, we're not going to play very hard. Kurt Signet is not going to let them have a letdown week, Bear. This game's going to get out of control very fast. Um, I think that Indiana wins this game by a lot of points. So Indiana minus 28 and a half. I'm fading Charlotte this week. What do you think? I was very impressed with your ability. To, as I gave the Indiana fight song uh, kind of underneath <laughs> you as you were giving the pick. Your ability just to to power through it. What 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 a great like uh, do do a week could be. But you're you're right. They have a an experienced quarterback in Curtis Rourke. Um, what I am ready for. I am ready for six and zero Indiana hosting undefeated Nebraska on October 19th Ooh, with big kick in, in, in Bloomington. Let's that's go. What, that's what I'm for. But uh, yeah, they, they, this is the Indiana was a team, but see the win total over and uh, the former, uh, the former podcast. This was a long running joke between myself and uh, at Stanford Steve and, and those, those who will listen to the podcast. They they know we had, we had the running joke about Indiana and the breaking up with your girlfriend and and losing the number like every year. Like we wanted to buy into Indiana, but we always, always said like they're like the girlfriend that you wanted to break up with. And you just wanted to lose her number, but then you just you kept going back. You kept going, no matter how yeah. poorly they treated you, no matter how many how many times they were the right side and they were covering as an underdog and figured out a way to not cover. You kept going back. You just can't break up with the Hoosiers, and uh, I'm I'm happy to see them off to a good start because Kirk Snedi can coach. Yes, he can. And uh, I'd I'd love to get to Bloomington for uh, for battle undefeats there in mid October. What's your best bet? Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Where are you going, Bear? I'm going to uh, the big SEC game in Norman this week. I, I alluded to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the big SEC game in Norman. <laughs> on, on college football 2024. But I'm going under 57 and a half. I yeah. talked about how I really didn't want to bet the side in this game in the gambling group chat. But, but I think the best unit on the field is the Tennessee defense, and specifically – the Tennessee defensive line, uh, Oklahoma's offensive line, like Sammy and I were talking about, have had massive problems uh, protecting. Uh, it's an Oklahoma offense that's down in the uh, the, the one teens in, in yards per play. It's not a great unit at all. This is going to be the best defense that they face uh, this season so far before they face some of the other uh, SEC defenses. And on the flip, just like Sammy said, you got a, a young quarterback going on the road for the first time. Brent Venables can coach defense. Uh, 57 and a half feels like a lot here. I, I don't know if we see a team get into the 30s because I, I think you, the, the eye popping numbers that people see from Tennessee uh, in, in the season so far light, lighten up uh, NC State, who I don't think is very good, scoring 69 on Chattanooga, 71 against Kent State. Like, I, I don't think that that is realistic here. Uh, I, I think this is this could, this could be one of those uh, twenty seven twenty type of games. It would yeah. not surprise me at all. Uh, under fifty seven and a half is is my my best bet, and I really really uh, like this one this week. So hopefully we can uh, get back to a five hundred on the best bets this week. So my DraftKings best bet of the week: Tennessee Oklahoma under fifty seven and a half. As I mentioned earlier, Bear, I think no one is talking enough about. Well, essentially is not a true freshman, but like his first real road star bear. It, it's a oh, big, it was you. I'm a, sorry. No. I, th I thought it was Sammy who mentioned no about uh, Nico going on the road first. I apologize. It's a it's yeah. a it's a really big deal. Like I know Tennessee's offense is very good. I get that, but this is a, not an easy place to play. Right? It's going to be loud. It's going to be hostile. Like I just think that the under is the way to go here because. I think Tennessee's offense is not going to be what it has been. And you guys have mentioned Oklahoma's offensive line, Jackson Arnold, not as good. Like, to me, this is an under. And it's also contrarian, right? Like, everyone's going to be in the over this week. 
Tennessee score a bunch of points. That Tennessee can blow them out. I, I'm one sort of the group here that I think that um, it's a lower scoring game, Bear. Uh, I like it. All right, Bear, my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. We're going back to the well. We are fading UCLA. I'm doing basically two fades, but one's the best bet of the week. Um, I want to read you a couple things about UCLA, who lost 42-13 to Indiana. That game wasn't oh, has close. Has UCLA replaced USC this year as, like, your hate team? Uh, no, I I like I want UCLA to be good. They're just not. Um, so they lost 42-13 to Indiana in a game that wasn't competitive. Indiana scored immediately. The Bruins fumbled. Indiana scored immediately again. They, they beat Hawaii 16-13. So after that, you, you know, like, you think this week of high energy at practice. Reported yesterday, UCLA cornerback Moore said coaches huddled the team up a second time early in practice because of low energy bear. Oh, boy. Um, then reports say their best two defensive low energy, linemen. Low energy. Fuck yeah. president, presidential candidates or, yeah. or, or a football <laughs> Exactly. And then uh, reported today that their, their two best defensive linemen are, did not practice, and so they might be out of this game. It's going to be 89 degrees, oh. Bear, in Baton Rouge on Saturday. This is 80, going to be 80, 89 degrees in Baton Rouge on Saturday feels like 120 degrees with the humidity. It's going to be a long day for the UCLA Bruins in this game. LSU sort of finally gets an opportunity to, to not be on the road to South Carolina, to not play USC. Uh, U- UCLA is, is just right now, unfortunately bear sort of just a dead lifeless program. It, it, it's just nothing. I mean, it's not good. It's just not good. So I mean, LSU minus 24, I think this game is going to be another blowout. I don't see how UCLA keeps it close unless LSU's defense completely implodes, which is certainly possible, Bear. That does worry me about yeah. LSU's defense. But the problem is I don't think UCLA has the pieces oh. capable to even keep up if LSU's defense is not good in this game. Like, they don't have the physicality. They don't have the players. They don't have the coaching staff. So uh, I think LSU handles business here. And this might be one of those where it's close early and sort of the heat and talent of, of LSU takes over at the end. At LSU this week, home Oregon next week. And home doesn't matter. No. And at Penn State the week after that. And, and Oregon's like, off this, a bye. This is, this is a three and nine team at best, probably. We talked about this. We were texting this other day. I mean, I think two wins is probably worth it. I tried to find another, another use of the under uh, wager. I couldn't find it because I already have two of them. I have under five and a half and under four and a half. I, I just think this team. I don't think I, I know. I mean, I asked one of the one of the people that covers the team about them. He said it's a disaster right now. So uh they're two weeks in. We're two games in for them, right? <laughs> they, they, they had a buy. It's already a disaster. So uh I will uh take LSU here minus 24. Uh I'm a Bruin fan. I, I want the Bruins to win. My parents are Bruin alums, Bear. I don't like doing this, but uh they're a bad football team right now. Yeah, I I I I want the book of Sammy to to post a number on combined season wins this year for Florida, Florida State, and UCLA. When I, when I was what you said at Sam, 12 and a half? No, not even nine and a half. If you figure if you figure UCLA or UCLA are gonna win two or three, Florida is probably gonna win three max. Maybe FSU gets four. Yeah, geez. I bet the under on that, yeah. Nine and a half. That, 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 that's what my number would be. So let's see what the book of Sammy can do for us here. Uh, that, that that's all we're we're gonna do for you this week. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you laughed. Hopefully you you learned. Hopefully we gave you some some winning wagers. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, watching on the YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully everybody uh, enjoyed listening on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. Remember to subscribe to that Bear Bets YouTube channel. And always remember, the less you bet, especially when you bet against UCLA, the less you win.